everyone. So the literary device that I had it was personification. You will have to forgive me because my glasses do glare and I have my notes on my laptop. But after doing some research, the definition that best describes personification is a literary device that assigns human qualities and attributes to objects or other non-human things. This can be observed through the use of emotions or daily activities such as singing or dancing. Um, the best example I was able to find is actually in uh, one of our readings, was actually one of our readings, I believe it was for week three or week four, but it's the famous poem by Emily Dickinson, Because I Could Not Stop for Death. It's a very short poem, so I'll read it for y'all just in case if you guys forgot. Um, because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage held but just ourselves and immortality. We slowly drove, he knew no haste, and I had put away my labor and my leisure too for his civility. We passed the school where children played at a wrestling in a ring. We passed the fields of gazing grain. We passed the setting sun. We paused before a house that seemed a swelling of the ground. The roof was scarcely visible, the corn is but a mound. Since then is centuries, but each feels shorter than the day. I first surmised the horses' heads were toward eternity. Right off the bat, we can observe that Emily Dickinson personified, uses personification throughout the poem to convey how death is like a person and how it waited for her. Uh, more specifically, a man, she, she said he could not stop and obviously he, man. <laughs> um, but we all know that death is not a person and it literally cannot stop to wait for someone. But that's just how she uses uh, personification uh, for death. Other examples of personification uh, would be the leaves dance in the wind, the wind whistled throughout the day, um, the pie is the pie is calling my name. That's my favorite one. Um, lightning danced across the sky, and probably something that we all have every morning is my alarm clock yells at me to get out of bed every morning. Obviously, there are more examples out there, but these are just a few that I stumbled upon while I was doing some research. Um, these sentences are examples of personification because it gives these inanimate object, objects human qualities and characteristics that they otherwise would not have. Because um, we all know that leaves cannot actually dance and that the wind can't whistle or that pie can't chalk and the lightning can't actually dance and that an alarm clock cannot yell at us. Um, that's, a, that's our mom's job. <laughs> Anyways, personification uh, is a useful tool because it can, it makes descriptions of human entities more vivid and will actually help readers understand these poems a little bit better because it allows um, us all to sympathize or react emotionally to non-human characters because by humanizing non-human things it brings them closer to the reader's experience um, which makes it easier for the reader to really just understand and uh, create it helps them understand and it also helps them create um, basically a vivid image in their head as they're reading uh, these poems. So it really is a powerful tool to create these vivid images, like I said, and make connections that are relatable and even memorable for a reader. So there it is.